fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. The Lone Ranger, far ahead of Tonto, was racing in pursuit of Scarface Bleeker. The outlaw leader, known as the King of Crime, had become separated from his band. He was riding for his life and firing over his shoulder at the masked man. For the Lone Ranger, it was the end of a long trail, a trail marked with the dead bodies of railroad detectives, federal agents, and other lawmen who had given their lives in the effort to run down Scarface Bleeker. Come on, Silver! Bleeker's horse was tiring. His gun was empty. He threw it at the masked man in a futile gesture. Silver, with a burst of greater speed, cut down the gap and raced beside the outlaw's horse. The Lone Ranger loosened his feet in the stirrups, dropped the reins, leaned to the right, and grabbed the King of Crime. The masked man's grip was broken as the two men hit the ground and rolled. You'll never get me alive. Oh. Bleaker leaped to his feet, snatched a knife from his belt, and charged. The Lone Ranger ducked beneath the sweeping oh, blade and rammed a fist to the outlaw's stomach. As Bleaker doubled over, his head came down to be met on the point of the chin by a smashing uppercut. His head snapped back. A hard fist crashed against his jaw. He staggered back. The masked man followed with another right and left. The king of crime went down. Well, Bleaker... That's the beginning of retribution. The end will be the hangman. Who's got him, fella? Oh, easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Kimasabi, you all right? Yes, Toto. Give me a hand. We'll search Bleaker in time before he regains consciousness. Uh, him king of crime? Yes. Well, him not look important now. Him look like ordinary crook with ugly face. He's no ordinary crook, Toto. He's the most dangerous outlaw this part of the country has ever known. Mm, nothing in pockets. We'll probably find the cash in the bank robbery in his saddlebags. Bathe his face while I tie his hands. Ah, me get canteen from saddlebags. Uh, him got big gang? Yeah, ten or eleven men work with him. And every man is a specialist in his line. One is a locksmith, another a safe cracker, and another a forger, and so on. Uh. Anyone know where hideout is? No. After every job, the gang spreads out. Each man rides alone and stays away from the hideout until he's sure no one has followed him. That's why we caught Bleeker without his gunslingers to help him. <clears throat> That'll hold his hands. Uh -huh. Leave his feet untied so he can ride. Uh, him getting conscious. Uh, Good. Uh, Catch his horse and bring it here, will you, Tom? Uh, let me get it. Uh, easy, Scott. Easy, Father. Get him up, Scott. You've got me. That's right, Bleeker. Oh, Hands are tied, huh? Of course. 
Didn't think anyone could follow my trail. Didn't think any horse could catch mine. It takes just one mistake to end a career like yours. And you thought wrong twice. Hey, I... I know you. You do? You're the Lone Ranger. Well, at least it took more than a regular law dog to get me. What's your price? Price? There's $10,000 or more in my saddlebags. That belongs to the bank in Redville. Belongs to you if you let me go. Tonto had your horse. If we chose to do so, we could keep that cash without letting you go. I'll pay you 50000 cash to join my outfit. No, thanks. 100000 Can you pay out that much money? You'd be surprised at how much I have to pay out when it's necessary to save my neck. So where is the money? At my hideout. Where is that? Yeah, you'd like to know, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not telling. Bleaker, money doesn't interest me. In fact, I'll not even collect the rewards for your capture. Oh, oh, you're a fool. Am I? Yeah, someone's going to get a lot of cash. Might as well be you. Do you really think you can buy your freedom? <laughs> it can't be done, Bleaker. There's honest law in Redville. Mister, you should have killed me. No, the hangman will do that. I'll not hang my boys are smart. We've made plans to take care of any emergency like this. My boys will know what to do, and they'll do it. Open it. Hey, Tonto's here with your horse. Did you look in his saddlebags, Tonto? Uh-huh. He's got it. Uh, me look. Me find money, money bags from bank, Redville. Good. Bleaker, that means you'll be tried in Redville for murdering the banker. All right, let's go. I'll help you to your feet. As I said before, mister... You should have killed me. Because when I get loose, I'm going to kill you. The capture of Bleeker was acclaimed throughout the state. He was questioned at great length, but refused to give any shred of information that might lead to the capture of his followers or the finding of his hideout where the loot of the gang was stored. He went on trial with his confidence unshaken and wore a smug smile through the days of testimony. People in all walks of life, from swampers and cafes to the governor in his mansion, awaited the verdict of the jury. We find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree, as charged in the indictment. Bleeker's smile remained unchanged as he stood and faced the judge, whose voice was like the voice of doom. You'll be hanged by the neck. Until you are dead, may God have mercy on your soul. Bleeker remained silent. There was no appeal, no comment. He was taken from the courtroom to a strong cell and placed under a heavy guard to await the date of execution, two weeks distant. On the day following the end of Scarface Bleeker's trial, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode into the patio of a Spanish mission. Who's a scout? Oh, easy. Oh, the Padre was one of the Lone Ranger's closest friends. Welcome. Welcome, amigos. Hello, Padre. Oh, Padre. Oh. I heard of the capture of that bad one named Bleeker. It is a good thing you've done. When does the evil one face trial? The trial ended yesterday. Tonto and I camped near Redville until we knew the outcome. Yes. Bleaker is to hang in two weeks. Madre mia. Senor, I will take care of the horses. Oh, thanks, Miguel. Gracias. Si, senor. Many of Bleaker's followers are still at large? All of them, Padre. You think they will help him to escape? Bleaker is very sure that he'll not hang. He knows that his men will do something to break him out of jail. And the sheriff is expecting such a move. He will, of course, maintain a heavy guard. Yes, but Padre, Bleaker's men are smart. They know the sheriff is expecting an attack to rescue their leader. For that reason, I'm sure they'll not attack. They'll do something wholly unexpected. What will that be, amigo? Oh, I wish I knew. Ah, uh, if only the other outlaws could be found. I suppose they wore masks when they robbed the bank. Yes. Did they leave no tracks when they rode away? They never leave tracks that can be followed for any distance. They split up and each man rides over hard ground that doesn't show hoof marks. Tot and I were lucky in finding a few signs when we trailed Bleeker. <laughs> I, I would not call it luck, amigo. You and Tonto have no equals in following a trail. But let us go inside where it is cool. 
There's a letter for you. A letter for me? See, si. It came three days ago. Ah, oh, those outlaws. They must be very clever. Did they leave no clue of any kind when they robbed the Redville Bank? Well, one of them threw away a half-smoked cigarette. It was made of an unusual kind of brown paper. That's all. You could hardly call it a clue to his identity or to his hideout. Here we are. Always quiet and peaceful in here. See here, amigo. Uh, sit down, my friend. Gracias. I will get the letter. It is here on the table. You must have it. Yeah. Only few people know that letter sent to Padre reach you. That's right, Tano. It must be from someone we trust. Here is the letter, senor. Oh, thanks. It is well sealed. If you wish to open it privately. Oh, no, no, Padre. I have no secrets from you. It is a privilege to be a trusted friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This letter is from one other man I trust, as I do you and Tonto. Who is that, amigo? The governor of the state. Here, I'll read his letter aloud. On behalf of the Commonwealth, I wish to express deep gratitude to you and Tonto for the capture of Bleecker. I've asked all lawmen in the state to send me every clue and shred of information about Bleecker's followers. I hope this pooling of facts, which were of little value standing alone, would speed the capture of the crooks who remain at large. Significant information has already come to light. I wish to discuss it with you. Must have there. Yeah. Their card and envelope with letter. What that? An invitation to the governor's masquerade ball. Oh, what that? That's a party, Tonto. The guests will wear masks and fancy costumes. Probably a number of men will wear cowboy clothes, and many will dress as Indians. You and Tonto might wear what you have on. A mask for Tonto is all you would need. It's like the governor to make it easy for us to see him. We go there? Oh, why, of course. As far as I'm concerned, any request from the governor is a command. We have eight days, Tonto. Time enough to visit the silver mine. It took several days to reach the Lone Ranger's secret silver mine in remote hills. Old Jim, a trusted friend, lived and worked there. He dug and refined a limited amount of ore. Some was exchanged for cash to take care of the masked man's needs. The rest was cast into silver bullets for his guns. After getting bullets and expense money, the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed for the state capital. They traveled at a leisurely pace and slept each night beneath the stars. On the last day of the journey, they were in the saddle at sunrise and riding through a woods. Suddenly, the masked man said, oh, Hold on, Tonto. Here's what we need. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. oh. water. Oh, oh. And that plenty good. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. <laughs> Uh, canteen's nearly empty. Steady, Silver. Easy. <laughs> Someone makes frequent use of this spring. Look at the path that's worn in the ground. Ah. Maybe animals come here. It's more likely the person who lives in that cabin. Cabin? Stand where I am and you can see it through the trees. Oh. Oh, this plenty lonesome place to live. Now, let's fill the canteen. Then we'll give Scouts and Silver a chance to... What matter? Otto, there's a half-smoked cigarette on the ground. Oh, and here. Here's another. <laughs> Brown paper. Here's another one. Ah. These same a sheriff of Redville find. Leave the horses at ground hitch and follow me. We'll see who's in that cabin. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the front of the cabin, they saw a horse tied to a tree at one side. Nearby, flames rose from a small mound of paper on the ground. Oh, that's paper burning, Tonto. Must have been lighted within the last few minutes. Ah, there's someone near. Maybe inside cabin. Hold your gun ready and keep a sharp watch. Let me do it. Paper at the edge of the pile had not yet been reached by fire. The masked man could see that it was cut in the form of neat squares and covered with fine writing. Suddenly, he bent and picked up several pieces. Otto, look at this. Huh? What'd you find? These are being burned. Invitations to the governor's masquerade ball. You're both what? covered. Put up your hands. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were called on to put up their hands. They reacted to the command with lightning speed. They leaped to opposite sides and fired in the direction of the voice. The man in ambush, Joe Peavy, unnerved by the sudden move, fired hurriedly. Take him, Toto. Peavy's location was revealed by the smoke of his gun. The Lone Ranger's second shot struck him in the shoulder with force that spun him off his feet. The masked man and the Indian leaped into the underbrush and grabbed the wounded man. Hey, you. Killed. I'm dying. Oh, no, you're not. This is just a flesh wound. You no. live to hang like bleaker. No. No, I... I... Oh. Mm. Faint. Probably a combination of pain and fear. I'll carry him, Toto. You go ahead and open the cabin door. Uh-huh. Ten minutes later, when Peavy opened his eyes, he saw the masked man sitting by his bunk. Toto was bandaging his wounded shoulder. Ready to talk, Peavy? You, you know my name. Yes, I know a lot about you. You worked in a government office in Washington. You were caught forging pay vouchers. What? You escaped. You joined Bleeker's gang. No, no, I didn't. Oh, don't lie. You were with that gang when the Redville Bank was robbed. I'm not a full member of that gang. You might as well be, because you'll hang with the others. You're no lawman. Who are you? What's the mask mean? I'm the man who captured Bleeker. You... You're the Lone Ranger. Here in your cabin, I found an assortment of pens and inks. You forged invitations to the governor's ball. Why? You're the Lone Ranger. Mister, I... I need help. I don't want to hang. You should have thought of that before you joined Bleeker. I didn't want to work for him. He made me. He found this cabin where I'd been hiding from the law. He recognized me from handbills and said he'd turn me in if I didn't work for him. So you helped his gang rob the Redville Bank. I I knew a man had been killed in that robbery. I I didn't want any part of that. I decided to go to the governor and tell him everything. I, I was willing to take my medicine for forgery... I could escape hanging. Did you see the governor? No. I rode to his estate on this side of town. I stood there beside my horse for a long time, thinking over what I'd say. The longer I thought, the more I realized that I knew little about the gang. I, I didn't know where any of the men or the loot could be found. I lost my nerve and rode away. Then you'd better answer my questions. Uh, I'll tell you all I know if you'll help me out. I'll tell you how the gang plans to set Bleeker free. Oh. Tonight, during the masquerade ball, four of the gang will abduct the governor and hold him as hostage. They'll serve notice that he dies unless Bleeker is released. How do you know? Two of the men came here yesterday with an invitation to the ball and a supply of the same kind of heavy paper. Where did they get the invitation? It had been sent to the Redville banker. It was stolen along with other mail and the cash. They made me make three copies of it. I was out of practice. I worked all night and spoiled a lot of paper before they were satisfied. While they waited, they talked about their plans. So after they left, you burned the paper that was left over. I just set fire to it when I heard your horses stop near the spring. I I hid in the brush. When I saw your mask, I thought you were another outlaw. Peavy, if you're sincere, I'll help you. I want you to go to the United States Marshal and give yourself up. You'll do time in jail for forgery. I'll do my best to save you from the hangman. But I... You go with him, Tonto. See if you can persuade the marshal to return with you and meet me here. I'd like to discuss plans for tonight with him. Now, we go. The governor's estate covered several acres at the edge of the city. It was brilliantly lighted and filled with men and women in costumes of every description. Everyone, including Tonto, wore a mask, so the Lone Ranger was in no way conspicuous. Even his guns attracted no attention because there were a number of men who wore gun belts as part of their cowboy attire. Soon after he arrived and handed in his invitation at the door, the Lone Ranger approached a tall man of military bearing who was dressed in the buckskin clothing and war bonnet of an Indian chief. Is there some place where we can talk privately? I hope you'd come. Let's go into my study. Right? Good evening, big chief. Good evening, good evening. How did you recognize me so quickly? I hope to fool some of my friends. I even use theatrical makeup to darken my skin. Your costume was described in the newspaper. Wonderful party, Governor. Thank you, thank you. A number of people are disguised as Indians. You're the only one who wears a war bonnet. So that's it. Is Tonto with you? Yes, he'll stay close to me to be handy when he's needed. Well, here's my study. Are you sure we'll be able to talk privately here? I'll make sure by looking in this closet. Someone might be hiding here. (laughs) 
Well, we are quite alone. Uh, let me shake hands with you and thank you personally for everything you've done. It's been a privilege to serve you and the people. Obviously, you received the letter I sent to the mission. Yes, sir. I told you that I had significant information about the Bleecker gang. Yes. Did you know that a clue in the form of a half-smoked cigarette had been left in Redville? Yes. It was made of an unusual type of brown paper. Well, the other day, one of the guards saw a man ride onto my property. He dismounted and stood beside his horse for over an hour, smoking constantly. Then he mounted and rode away. Oh, so that's it. Huh? The cigarettes he discarded were like those found in Redville. Am I right? Yes. How did you know? Did anyone try to find that man after he left? No, we, we were unconcerned about him until the following day when the cigarette clue arrived from Redville. By then, his tracks had been washed out by rain. Now, that man is now in jail. He surrendered himself to the marshal. He, he did? Yes. He's been a fugitive for over a year. Wanted in Washington for forgery. I talked to him this morning. You'll hang for his part in the murder at Redville? Later, Governor, I'll ask you to help save him from the hangman because of his aid in saving your life. How has he helped to save my life? He told me what Bleeker's men are planning. They intend to abduct you and hold you as hostage until Bleeker's released. It would probably mean your death. Abduct me? At least four of Bleeker's men are guests at this party. They're here right now in your home. They got in with forged invitations. I'll have every door and window locked so no one can leave. Then I'll have everyone unmasked. We'll see who they are. Uh, Governor, instead of that, will you change clothes with Toto? So he'll be abducted in my place? Yes, sir. No. I'll not listen to such plan. Otto, will you come in, please? Uh, me wait near door. Me think you call soon. If you think I'll let Toto jeopardize his Governor, life... Governor, you are one of our nation's most important men. I feel justified in using extreme measures to protect you, even against your will. If you intend to use force... Tomorrow, sir. you may order my arrest. Or worse, you may deprive me of your friendship. But at least you'll be alive. For that, I'll risk anything. How do I try this war bonnet for some? Yeah, let go. Leave that alone. Man. You could be tied and gagged and locked in that closet. But the evening would be more enjoyable for you if you'd wear Toto's clothes. For the next half hour, the tall man in Indian clothing and a war bonnet remained apart from the guests. He nodded silently to those who spoke and discouraged conversation until one man, dressed as a two-gun bandit, stepped close and spoke in a laughing voice. <laughs> Big Chief, come with me. I want to show you something. You'll laugh your head off. Just come with me for a minute. The Indian maintained an aloof manner, but the other man went on. Oh, you needn't try to fool me. We all know who you are. Just step in the next room. The next room proved to be a small library with casement windows reaching to the floor. One of them was open. I'll close this door. The next instant, a gun was pressed against the Indian's back. This is a gun, Mr. Governor. Just go right out that window. Step to the ground. Make it lively or I'll shoot. Three men were waiting in the darkness beyond the window. Good work, Wolf. Get that gag on him. You take care of the guards. Yeah. Give me a hand with this gag. Now hurry. The horses are ready. Two hours of riding brought the outlaws and their captive to a cave in a remote valley. This cave, crudely furnished with homemade bunks and chairs and lighted by oil lamps, was large enough to admit the horses as well as the men. In addition to the four who had brought the prisoner in Indian clothing, six other men were in the cave. Oh, 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 Have any trouble? Not a bit. Everything went as smooth as silk. This will be good news for Bleecker. The boss is as good as free right now. By tomorrow, everyone will know that the governor has disappeared. Hey, Wolf. Look here. What's the matter? This is an Indian. What? An Indian? Uh, 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 you fellas make plenty big mistake. Who are you? <laughs> me, Tonto. How come you're dressed in those clothes? <laughs> me change clothes with governor. Oh, you <laughs> did, eh? Well, that trick's going to cost you your life. Unless we can think of another plan mighty quick, it'll cost Bleeker's life, too. Give me that knife, Scar. I'll take care of this redskin right away. Let's take him. Hey, 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 boys, stop your guns. They want gunplay. <laughs> The attack was sudden and wholly unexpected. Over a dozen well-armed men dashed into the cave and spread out quickly with guns barking. The fight was ended quickly. The outlaws who survived were handcuffed by the marshal and deputies who had come with him. You crooks line up against their wall. Come on now. The Lone Ranger cut the ropes that held Tonto's hands and feet together. You had a rough time, Tonto. You all right? Oh, stomach sore, but me all right. 
It not good ride horse. Stomach down. <laughs> we brought your horse. He's outside with the others. Oh, that good. Well, your plan was sure a good one. Thanks, Marshal. I thought the men would lead us to their hideout. Well, this is it, all right, Nev. We'll probably find all the stolen loot somewhere in this cave. <laughs> I reckon Bleaker will lose that smug grin of his when he hears of this night's work. Bleaker will hang on schedule. Well, Tonto, we're not needed any longer. We'll return to the governor's home so you can get back your own clothes. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, thanks, mister, for letting me help. It was a downright privilege. Well, thank you, Marshal. We'll see that these crooks are jailed as soon as we dress their wounds and find the stolen goods. Well, we'll meet again. Adios. Adios. Hey, Injun, where'd you come from? Hey, rode with your men, Marshal. Well, you must be a friend of Tano's, huh? I am indeed. Doggone. I clean forgot to ask that masked man if he'd spoken to the governor about helping Peavy escape the hangar. He, he spoke to the governor, and the governor has promised to intercede for Peavy. Oh, you know about that, huh? Yes, Martin. Hey, you don't talk like a redskin. Who are you, anyway? <laughs> I'm the man with whom Tonto changed clothing. Now I must return to my home and change back. Huh? You... Holy smoke! Your Excellency! <laughs> yes, Marshal, I, I came along. You see, I didn't want Tonto to risk his life for mine. On the other hand, I didn't want to spend the night in the closet bound in gag, so uh, I compromised with the lone ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 